What's up everybody and welcome to this special video. So this is supposed to be a travel channel and well things like photography and videography that are related to travel but currently I'm not traveling a lot mainly because we are saving money for our world trip next year. I know that my last two videos had nothing to do with travel so this time I'm doing something special. I'm going to look back at one of my favorite trips from the last years. It all started in 2016 when once again I had the urge to go to a tropical place. So doing my research I found out about Malaysia, specifically the Sabah region of Malaysia in Borneo. Sure, Malaysia is pretty well known as a travel destination, especially Kuala Lumpur in West Malaysia, but almost no one knows about Sabah and the beautiful nature that it offers. I don't have any footage from our trip to Malaysia, because back then I didn't have any interest in filming. Sure, I had a GoPro Hero 4 with me, but I didn't even know what I wanted to do with it. I filmed a few little things with the GoPro that I will also include here, but it will mainly be photographs that I'll include in this video. And I also feel that it's going to be the longest video I did so far. Also another thing, I have my laptop with pictures of Malaysia in front of me. If you see me looking down all the time, that's because I'm looking at the pictures to know what I'm talking about. So the international airport in that region is in Kota Kinabalu, which is the capital of Sabah. And because it's not possible to fly directly there from here, we had to make a stop in Singapore. Singapore Changi Airport has been voted the best airport of the world for the past few years, so I think it's one of the best airports if you have to, if you have to change flights. Also something interesting that happened when we went to Malaysia is that the day before our flight my best friend had his wedding so we were partying like until 4 a.m. in the morning then we went to bed for about two hours before we had to get up to get the train to go to the airport and because the hotel we spent the night at the friend's wedding was quite a fancy hotel we basically spent about 250 to 300 dollars for two hours of sleep. That's really greatly invested money isn't it? So the first day when we arrived we didn't do anything. We walked around a bit while waiting for the check-in. We checked in, we had some dinner and then we went to sleep because we were jet-lagged. But the second day we had a cooking class. It's not something that I ever considered I would be doing, but the travel agency that I booked with recommended that cooking class, so we decided to take it anyways. You get to know local people, local cuisine, have a great time exploring the markets and it was a really great experience. Our guide Pat picked us up in the morning at our hotel and we went with him to the market where we bought ingredients for our lunch. But also in the market he introduced us to a lot of exotic ingredients. So for example he showed us the cinnamon bark that actually is used to make cinnamon. And we also went to the fish market outside but there was also this funny local guy who wanted to take a picture with us. After buying everything we needed in the market, we went to the restaurant owned by Pat's mother and she taught us how to prepare some local dishes. I actually don't remember anymore what we did exactly, but here are some pictures of us cooking. This is a picture of our dinner. The traditional way to eat in Malaysia is that you get your own plate with uh, rice and then there are different dishes on the table that are shared with everyone else. So you always can choose what you want to take from each dish and add it to your plate that already has the rice on it. We also had this awesome coconut yogurt frappe. It was really awesome. I hope that I get to try it again sometime. So Petrus, our guide, isn't on the picture, but here in the middle beside my wife, you can see Pat's mother and his sister is right beside her. And on the right is a Chinese couple that also went to the cooking class with us. The, the third day we still spent in Kota Kinabalu, but Kota Kinabalu is not a very interesting city. So for our fourth and fifth day in Malaysia, we were picked up by our guide, Philip, and our driver Alfie. They took us on a trip to the highlands of Sabah. As you probably know, Borneo is a tropical island on the equator, but the highlands go up to around 2000 meters above sea level, so they have a bit of a different climate up there. Philip even told us that uh, the crops that they have up there are similar to what we have in Europe. We also stopped at the market on the way, where they had lychees or mangosteen, our favorite fruit from Malaysia. But the main things about the highland is that Mount Kinabalu is up there. It's the highest mountain in Southeastern Asia at about 4,000 meters above sea level. But we didn't go up to Mount Kinabalu. 
But the first day we went to the pouring hot springs close to Mount Kinavalu. As the name says, there are some hot springs, but they also have a canopy walk. They also have a butterfly garden there. So if you like beautiful giant butterflies, I mean, some of them have this size. <laughs> we also had our lunch there. Again, some Malayan food. I really loved it and I'm getting hungry right now when I'm looking at those pictures. <laughs> there was also waterfall. There was possibility to swim in there, but we chose to take a dip in the hot springs instead of going to the waterfall. After our afternoon at the hot springs, we were taken up to our hotel at about 2000 meters of altitude. The day was beautiful, only just as we got to the hotel, it suddenly started to pour. But as soon as it was time to go to dinner, the rain had already stopped again, so we didn't get wet at all. We met this giant moth on the way to the dinner room, so there we had a great dinner. I don't know how this food is called, but it reminds me of sukiyaki in Japan or fondue chinoise in Switzerland. You have a pan in the middle with boiling water or some boiling sauce. And you can choose the food that is on the table and put it inside the pot yourself and let it cook and then eat it out of there. It was really awesome. The next day we went to the foot of Mount Kinabalu. Yeah, we didn't go up because to go to the top of the mountain you need about two days. Well, there are people who do it in like three hours. But normal people start in the morning of one day, then they reach a hut almost at the top in the afternoon and the next morning they get up really early to go up to the top of the mountain. This is certainly something that we are going to do in the future. We already decided on that, but it's not the time yet. <laughs> the weather was quite foggy the next day. It was also really humid, but it's not like it was raining. It's just the humidity that makes everything look so wet. They also have a lot of locals working there, students, but also older people. They carry food and water up to the hut at the top. It's similar to the Sherpas in Himalaya. They carry a lot of weight from time to time. And after that, we went on a walk through a forest, which is in a nature reserve. And they have a lot of orchids in there. And for example, you even have the smallest orchid of the world, which is here, as you can see, it's compared to the size of the finger of my wife. And they also had a little conservatory with flesh-eating plants. After that, our guide and driver drove us back to Kota Kinabalu, where we would spend one night before taking a plane to go to the eastern side of Sawa. At the airport, we were picked up by our guide Ron, and first he took us to the how is it called? To the Sepilog Orangutan Rehabilitation Center. That is where they teach orangutans, which were illegally kept in captivity, how to survive by themselves. As you see, this orangutan looks quite sickly. I think he was saved not so long before this picture was taken. So he has lost a lot of hair in captivity. But we've also witnessed a few funny things while walking around there. For example, a bug caught by a scorpion, another bug being controlled by a parasite, or just a very poisonous centipede. And they don't only have orangutans in that rehabilitation center, they also have the Bornean sun bears. After a couple of hours in the rehabilitation center, we were driven to the pier, which is located in a little town built on stilts. And over there, we had a boat waiting for us, which would take it to the river lodge, where we would be spending the next two nights. And we actually went through the ocean to enter the river. I think we spent about one and a half hour on that boat, but we also stopped in between on another lodge, just to have our lunch. Then we continued in our boat and on the side of the river we would pass some very rural villages. Then we arrived at the river lodge which is called Sukau River Lodge. And in that river lodge we had the little room in a cabin, of course with shared bathrooms. After arriving we would already go on our first river safari. On that river safari we saw some proboscis monkey with their long noses and also some normal monkeys. And at the end of the river safari, we had this beautiful sunset. The next day, we got up really early before breakfast to go on a morning safari, which is a great time to spot birds. We also had breakfast on the boat where I managed to spill my coffee, but sadly, it doesn't seem like we have any picture of that. And check out this beautiful butterfly. It looks like it has eyes on its back. In the afternoon, we went on a little tour through the jungle with our guide Ron, who is a real nerd when it comes to butterflies, so he showed us some butterflies. And after that, he took us to a local cafe right by the riverside. And they also had a cat over there. Yes, I had to take a picture of that, sorry. That's me relaxing a little bit by the river. 
And after that, we went on another river safari, which was also the highlight of our stay there, because we actually got to see a wild alpha male orangutan. I mean, it really looks majestic, doesn't it? And of course, we also saw some more monkeys, even a mother with a little baby monkey. So cute. And another sunset. And the next day we were picked up to go to the Tubbin Wildlife Reserve further east. The Tubbin Wildlife Reserve is the biggest untouched virgin forest of Sabah. On the way there we had a flat tire. We also met the monitor lizard, which I think is the second biggest lizard species that exists. I mean, you don't see it in the picture, but it's about two meters long, I think, or one and a half meters with the tail. And they can be pretty dangerous if they bite you because they have so many bacteria in their mouth that you'd be sure to get an infection. We also had some other monkeys or birds on the way. This is the center room of our jungle lodge. And this is our room, it's a single hut with two beds. We moved them together, of course. It even has a shower and a small balcony by the riverside. On that first day, we went on a walk through the jungle. There was also this giant tree over there. And we went to a mud volcano and it is said that this mud is very good for your skin, it keeps you young if you put it on your face, so that's what I did. But it doesn't seem like it kept me young. We also went on an evening safari after that, where we saw a civet cat, a flying fox, or the highlight for me at least, the leopard cat. And this is a little gecko that was outside of our hut. The next day we went to the jungle again, this is a millipede, they are not dangerous at all, so you can touch them without any problem. And we were guided to a little pond where we could swim in the jungle. This is this one, we took a swim in there. It's really cool, nice to take a dip in this hot, humid jungle weather. And I got attacked by a leech. Well, not really attacked, I mean, it was on my pants. I didn't realize what it was, so I tried to take it off and then it got stuck to my hand until that Scottish guy in the background taught me that you have to use a credit card to remove them from your fingers. Some more Malayan food over there. And then we had a relaxing traditional spa afternoon with a foot bath and also some mud masks. And also I forgot to introduce our guides. This is Jessica, the main guide in the middle. On her right is Casper, the trainee guide and on the left on her left, our right, is the driver who was called Max, I think. Then I still remember their names. But it was a great time back then. This is a view from the edge of the jungle towards the plantations that are outside. I mean, we always have this negative view of uh, palm plantations, but actually palm plantations down there are a very good thing for the wildlife because they live in the jungle during the day, but in the night they move out to the palm plantations to get food. This also makes it easy to spot them. We also met some bats. This is a picture of a baby cobra. Beautiful snake. Some more mon monkeys right outside of our lodge. And some very naughty monkeys. And in the evening we saw some other civet cats, owls or the leopard cat again. And we even went on a night walk, like at 11 p.m. to see some more insects and frogs, like a moth, frog, another moth. I think this is a grasshopper or something similar. Don't really know much about this kind of animal, sorry. <laughs> and this is the most interesting, oh, you don't see it in this picture, but actually this gecko or whatever it was, was eating the sleeping bug. And in the next day, which would be the Last morning at the jungle lodge, we spent a quiet morning eating coffee by the jungle, taking some stupid selfies, some photos, then we had some very good lunch and then we said bye to the great staff of that lodge. I think it was a great time to be there because it was not crowded by tourists. I mean they have pictures of that area where every table is busy, but as we were there actually it was only my wife, me and the Scottish couple. Maybe it was the end of the season, I have no idea. 
I mean, we were quite sad because we didn't see any leopards. Yes, they actually have Bornean leopards in that forest, but they are very, very rare. It's very unlikely to find them. But there was another highlight before we actually left the forest to go to the airport that we actually managed to find an elephant bull walking around alone. It's really made us happy. It was the highlight of our time there. I think it's called the Bornean pygmy elephant. This is the uh, smallest elephant type that there is in the world. After that we went to the airport, which is actually the smallest airport that I've ever been to. And we took the smallest plane that I've ever been inside, outside of the plane that I took to go skydiving, of course. Then we went back to Kota Kinabalu, where we would be spending the last four nights on the Gaia Island Paradise Resort right outside of Kota Kinabalu. We had to take a boat for about 30 minutes to get to the Gaia Island Resort. And that resort was right on the edge of an untouched virgin forest, so you were actually not allowed to go into the forest without a guide. In that resort we had this beautiful room, nice bed, very big bathtub, but also shower, a lounge outside. This is the lounge in the daytime. Our room was in the top right corner of the building, I think. There are four rooms in one such building. They gave you a free Wi-Fi 4G hotspot to carry around. This is a pool with the beach in the background. Because it was right by the edge of the jungle, they even had wild monkeys, monitor lizards or boars walking around. <laughs> Another picture of the beach, more pictures of the beach. <laughs> We even had lunch in a basket in the private beach. It was actually included in our package, so we just decided to have that lunch in the private beach. They even had wine, a few sandwiches, which were actually very, very good. I never expected it. Having wine by the beach was actually not bad in the beginning, but I mean, it's a tropical place, so the wine got really warm really fast, and at some point it wasn't drinkable anymore but we really enjoyed it. And of course, there's also the possibility to do different activities over there that are organized by the hotel and one of them was snorkeling. We went snorkeling two times. One time it was my wife and me with a group right by the hotel, but then you also had the possibility to go further outside to go snorkeling and that's where I got this nice sunburn. And if you wonder what those stripes are, that's because I was wearing the GoPro chesty. And I think this is all that I have to talk about Malaysia. This is a view of Gaia Island. I think actually in the western side of the island you see the resort. The private beach is on the lower left of the picture. So that's our trip to Malaysia. It's a really beautiful country with beautiful people. If you want to go somewhere that not everyone else is visiting and if you want untouched nature, that's a really great place to go. So this is it for this travel related video for once. Sorry that the quality has dropped since I finished my Japan vlogs, but that's just because I don't have any other footage at the moment. It will certainly get better in the future. But if you actually finish the video, let me know what you think about it. Should I do something else like this? For example, from a Thailand travel? Or do you think it's completely boring and I should just do something else? But be sure if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up just so that I know that it's something worthwhile, even if you don't want to comment. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.